and good morning again here we go so this is again year 10 it says lesson one it's not lesson one this is lesson two the year 10s get three hours a week if you are joining for the second time this morning I'm not going to do one on Saturday and Sunday because we all deserve a break but after the year 7 one I do on Monday we will um, just do the third lesson and get through a few things right so um, going off what we did yesterday if we type in phonics this is where we left off so for those who are joining for the first time today there's a video posted yesterday I don't know you can just look in videos it's labeled year 10 and what we did is we learned how to create a random number and then we created a random number using a range from something we had already set up we printed that number then we started to create a list we added three items all with string data type we use the keyword called len to report back the amount of items in the list. This is useful if you've got a list which keeps adding. So uh, for example, um, if you wanted to work for Xbox or something, uh, every day millions are signing up to its Xbox Live service, it will append a username, their password and all of their credentials to a big database. And at the end of the day, you might want to see just how many people are subscribed to your service and that is needed so that you don't have to keep going in every day and changing the number manually it will always count the list and give return that number we learn how to do some things with lists like pop things out uh, remember pop removes the last item in the list unless you put a number in here and then it will remove the item at that index uh, we then appended um, something to the end of the list and then we found a way of inserting something at a specific point in a list and then that is where we left off so the idea is we're going to create a hangman game and we're not allowed to do any examples in these lessons which show you how to do it in, a, in hangman I'm going to teach you all of the parts you need and then you have to then in the end take every single concept we talked about so this is random this is lists and then we're about to go into the uh, second parts today and I think the best thing we can do today is a for loop so like I said at the start of the uh, program put these three little line three little dots and then at the end of the program put these three little dots and then you can still have everything we've done and um like carry on creating new content here we are having to run the old program so what i think we do today is um loops so i think we should start with um a f iterative loop now then, in computer science, there's three major keywords you need to remember when you're programming. the sequence, there's iteration, and then there's um, selection. These three words are extremely important because it's the whole basis of any running program. So sequence being your algorithm, the sequence of instructions you're going to program into the computer for it to follow. The iteration, does it need to repeat any part of it? Because any, every part of everything we do is at least some kind of iteration. Just keeping you alive right now has iteration in it. it you breathe in, you breathe out, your heart beats, it pumps blood. That That's it. It's, it. it's an iterative process. And selection is like your actual thought process, your actual thought process to pick up the mouse, to move the mouse, to access things. You're selecting something for your body some part of your body to do a very specific task and using it to do something and um, it's the best way i can put it into like a human construct but there you go 
Right, so the, the thing we're going to look at is called an iterative loop, and we call them for loops. Now, for loops are very, very, very important because there might be some point in a program where you have to do something a repeat amount of times and it has to be done exactly the same way every single time. So, an example would be I just want the computer to print all of the numbers to 10. So rather than going print and then one and then print and then two or, or something like that or even putting it like this two, three, four, five. I want to print all of the numbers to 10. So we start with a um, keyword for and then we use what we call an iterative variable or a throwaway variable. We don't care about what this is called for now so I'm going to say for count um, in the range of 10 so from 0 this starts at the number 0 in a for loop and it goes all the way up to whatever you um, specify so I'm just going to say in the range of 10 it knows it's a number I'm going to print count and you've got to see this work before you can start doing things with it so if we run this now it's just printed out all the numbers starting at zero like we went over yesterday to nine there are ten numbers here so brilliant what can you do with that well this is now really important because now we can start sort of do things with uh, things which have like a sequence of uh, things inside them so if you take our list from above so we'll copy our list copy this is why you you do this because now we can use our, our um, old code without having to remake it and not only that it gets you using it again and therefore getting in the practice so if I've got subjects here so for count in and instead of putting range let's put subjects let's see what happens now press a 5 and look what it's done it's printed everything in that list now then that could be really good if we you think about um, how, how could I use that data now what if I did this in range len subjects like I taught you yesterday this keyword what's it going to print now it's going to print out three so we have got loads of things now we can do if you if you've got that mind to sort of think forwards like how can we use this um, we we can um, iterate through mass amounts of data in no time at all so how can we make it a useful um, thing well we can make like the world's uh, we can make a, a game where it's for kids and I think I've done this in lessons before I think I always start with this when I say I think I mean I forget what I teach at the very start of the year just to get people started with um, getting something working and showing them what the code looks like before I get into it we are going to make a little game for kids where they can do their times tables so if we go to what we did yesterday and we open our um, we open our Google Docs because if you remember what we did yesterday if you watched yesterday's video is I said when you're doing something you need to have some kind of file to document everything you're doing and I said get a Google account uh, use the Google software and yesterday lesson one Python programming program a hangman game with these and stuff so that's what we're doing and then I built this in and now I have done um, create a, a for loop so that's what we've done and then I'm going to say I go to an advanced section where I just do something with that information regardless of what I'm using I just show you how it works in context and I throw people forwards so they can see like a little bit of um, how you apply this how you'd use it um, this is for the people who didn't tune in yesterday I'm just re-explaining stuff making the vi uh, video unnecessarily longer than it needs to be so this is starting at 10 minutes 28 
and I'll um, I'll put lesson two here. So there I know. So this is just for when all the videos are finished. I can just go back in and I can put these timestamps on the videos and uh, make it easier for people when I say, look, this is how you, how you do it, this is quicker. Because uh, there's no point redoing these videos over and over and over again. Um, so, we'll, so we're going to make this game for um, uh, kids. So I'm going to go for count. So for I, now this is a professional way of doing it. You use what we call a throwaway variable. I just call it a letter so that it's easier to remember. And we start with I, like, because if we were to do a nested loop, which we'll go on to in another lesson, your next letter would be J and then K and then L. Because sometimes you use X, Y, and Z for simple numbers within programs just because you don't need them. If you're using a variable you want to use for the rest of your program, which you need to remember, naming them, things like that. I know putting an S on the end of everything on the end of a word is usually a list to me. When I'm making a list of things, I normally put a G at the front because I know it's a range of things. Um, but we'll get into that in another into another lesson when I talk about naming conventions. Right. So for I in range, I'm going to go 12 here. So we're making a really basic kids game, which um, they can get a sum printed to the screen and then they can check if it's right or not so for i in range 12 print and then we're gonna go i which will be zero and then i'm gonna go times and then i'm gonna go comma and then i'm gonna go um i and then i'm gonna go comma and i'm gonna go equals then i'm gonna go comma and then I'm going to do the sum or the product because it's times of i times i and what this is going to do is print out all of the times tables to 12 so remember it stops at 11 I need it to go to 12 so I'm going to put my range to 13 so if I run this now like we get that so not times not is not not times one is one not times two is two times two is four 3 times 3 is 9, and you can see it's doing all of the square numbers because it's like that. But that's not what we want. We want to get the user to type in the number of times table they want to learn. So at the start of here, I'm going to type in um, um, number, num. Oh, I'm not using num because I'm already using it above, so I'll call it times table equals int because it needs to be a number, input enter your times table number so when you've done that it's going to go from uh, 0 to 13 but this time we are going to print 0 times and instead of this being i we are going to use times table and then it's going to be i times times table and then we run it f5 so enter your times table number 7 bang what you should get is not times seven is seven. One times seven, because I entered in seven if you didn't see that. I want to I'll make this a bit bigger. I'll try my best to keep everything into the centre of the screen, just in case my uh, um, little message at the bottom gets in the way. So not times seven is no one times seven fourteen. And we've just built a teach yourself times table. So that's how you probably use a for loop. Now we could extend this program now to when that's done that and you've entered and you've shown the use your times table. You could get rid of the for loop and just start picking out random numbers from a range of naught to um, 12 times it by another random number of naught to 12 printing that to the screen. In fact, I've just had a good idea actually. Every time I've done an advanced uh, tutorial like this, I'm going to suggest something you can go and do and maybe you could upload that and and show me that you can do it. It'll just show me if anybody's actually watching the videos as well and um, having a go at something. 
so your I'll put this in the um, in the PowerPoint now from now on so it's an actually good idea that. so after the advanced now we're going to go demo we're going to call it a demo and I'll write this out so I'll make this available this document to everybody so that they can just have a look at what we've done because there might be loads of pages here so the demo for this creating a folio would be create a um, folio which shows the whole of a user's timetable. I want you to do that first, but then I want you to um, print. Now this is not using a for loop you see, but it's just getting you using um, the program because what we could do is we could uh, create a button, some graphics on the screen and then you type in your timetable, it shows it you and it gives you seven seconds or ten seconds to look at it. The screen goes red and then the next part of the program says what is six times seven, five times seven. You could get it to do that. So program a um, randomly a random generated uh, times table question. Uh, do it uh, five times. So there we go. We are using a for loop. Um, you've got to go four um, i is zero and it's not greater than five uh, or it's up to five keep asking this randomly generated question um, I'll put a star on that because I'm going to need to put a solution to the problem maybe in here so that you can have a look if you get stuck but that's a, no, that's the point actually I'm not going to ever show you a solution to that um, because that's your learning I guess right so that's four loops. Going to need them. Very, very important that you understand how they work and you can do a few things with um, going into them, coming out of them and using their numbers to do things a set amount of times. So like I said, that you're going to give the user five questions and the only way you can repeat the same thing five times is to use a for loop. So in the for loop, you generate a new random number you then print out what is i times the number they typed in up here and then if the i is equal to that sum which you'll do behind the scenes then print correct we did that um, yesterday I think when we did the um, is your number this number and there you go that's that's actually quite a nice little task that I might write that down and start doing a five a day um, because I saw on a website some mask guy does a, like a five a day programming tricks and I think I'm going to start doing it because it's really it's a really good idea really really simple challenge is what um, what can just get you started right so let's have a look at what we're doing next because I wrote in a um, document I broke down a pr I wrote the program and I broke it down and said what can we do right this is very similar this next bit to what we've been doing we have to talk about how do we make things repeat forever now we've already done it in one of our advanced sections and this is what we call a um, definite uh, or non-definite I don't know if it's if it's that's a word but it's either definite or non-definite loop now this is similar to the for loop we call them um, we call them uh, while loops so this loop the while loop is different from a for loop meaning we can um, either choose to go in it or not if you want if you look at this line of code here you can see it will run that it'll run that and it has to go in there whether you like it or not hence why every single time it ran this so I'm gonna comment out this code and <clears throat> we're going to talk about while loops so the keyword obviously is while and then a key another keyword we can use with them is this word called true now if you just type that and put a colon at the end it will definitely jump into this loop. It's it, it's a definite loop at the minute because it has to go into it. 
because while true, I'm going to print hello. And what you'll see when you run it is it'll just print hello forever. I don't know if you can see at the bottom of the screen. Um, but if I just minimize this a bit and then scroll it up, if that's in the center of the screen, it's just continuously printing hello. You can see it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger because it's in a forever loop. It's just going to do that until, well, it'll just do this forever. So you're going to stop the program. So what we mean by a non-definite loop is, is if we can go into this loop if we want to and we supply it with a condition while x is equal to 1. And I think you can put this in brackets if you want just to make it easier for you to see. So while x is equal to 1, print hello. Now if I run it now, it should break the whole program because it doesn't know what x is. x has not been defined. So if I put x to equal 2, it's not going to go into this loop. Right? We're expecting it to say hello. Otherwise, we'll print outside of the loop. Notice that it's on the it's flush against the side here. I'm going to print hot dogs. Just so that you can see it's something stupid. And you know that we've not been into here. Because if we're going into here, it's going to print hello. And if it's not gone into here, it's going to print hot dogs. So we press because it's got to jump over this. This is what we mean by it's a non-definite loop. So we printed hot dogs. If I change hex to 1, it goes back into my loop again. So that's great. Um, what if what if I want to come out of the loop in a while? What if I want to actually end? Normally this is um, the first thing you're jumping when you're in a video game. Like has the user press start? No, no, no. When they press start, they jump into the loop. And then when they get less than... Z uh, when the health goes below zero, it shows another screen, um, and or if health is less than zero, it will go into this if, and then it will break out of the loop. So hello, and then we're going. Um, I'm gonna um, go count equals um, zero, and then. Um, Sorry, yeah, so Kenji is zero. So when it jumps into this loop now, when I stop it, it's going to jump into this loop and print that hello, and then count is going to equal to zero. Um, oh, sorry, I, I put count here, sorry, count equals zero. And then I want to, but every time I go around, I want to go plus equals one to count. So it'll start with zero when it jumps in. It'll go away and then it'll start again and then it'll go one, then it'll go two, then it'll go three, then it'll go four, then it'll go five. If count um, is equal to zero, uh, 100, so if it's printed hello 100 times, we are going to break and then we are going to print our dogs. So this is how you get out of a conditional loop. So if I press F5, it's going to do that and then look, it's jumped out and uh, printed our dogs. Let's do that to a thousand so you can see it do it again. I don't know if you can see it because of the um, the bottom of my screen, um, but if I press F5 now, it's waiting now to get to a thousand. We might, I know it's printed hot dogs now, and if I just put my thing into the center of the screen, you can see that it's probably printed a thousand hellos before it printed hot dogs. There you go, and then that's how you'd use a while loop. So this would be we jump into a game and we have to keep doing the the, the game, keep playing the game until you're dead, and that is going to form the basis of our um, advanced question. So let's go back to our thing here. So we have I'm going to put this on a new slide now. So I'll copy this slide. I'm going to say creating a while loop. We all this, and our advanced example is going to start at 2511. And then we remember if we've, we've got a demo coming as well. So, our advanced example is simply going to be we can only go into the loop if. Uh, the user has pressed start, so we're going to go input 
equals and do um, press start to begin um, I'm going to put one or zero because I don't want to um, mess about so we're going to put user equals int because it's a number I just want a number if they type in any letters I want it to break um, so while user is equal to one start the game otherwise we're going to print um, um, game over um, exiting so that's so when the user presses one it's going to start the game um, now we want to see if the health so we're going to do another while inside this while so we're going to set the health to 100 while health is so health is equal to 100 we've got to set the variable first so while health is greater than or equal to zero so you've got to go no greater or equal to zero uh, greater than zero if you get to zero health you're dead come on so while health is greater than zero i am going to import um time like i said this is an advanced tutorial i'm not explaining why i'm doing these new bits this just pushes you on so you can see how you might use it in a proper setting without it being a dead trivial example so well for while health is greater than z so while use equals one so while health is greater than zero which it is because it's going to be set to 100 straight away we are going to keep repeating time dot sleep i'm going to wait um one second no we'll wait five seconds um health minus equals 25 um and then when obviously this gets to zero exactly so in four ticks it's going to come out of this while i'm going to print you are dead and then um at this point i want to break out of the while loop and the game is just going to end there you go so press start to begin or oh, you can't see i wonder if putting my things up here would be better because I've, I've moved them from up there because i wanted people to see when i was clicking on tabs and things so that they could see i was in something else so i think i'll keep it like that from now on um so it's asking me to please enter one or zero so type in one and then it's going to wait for five seconds and it's going to hopefully print out oh no it's i've not got it to print out your health so i'm going to stop the game i'm going to stop the game and i'm going to make sure i know what's going on so while use is equal to one so i've typed in one health is equal to zero so while health is greater than zero time at minus 25 it's gonna i'm going to print out health i'm going to print health at the very start of the loop so that i know it's gone down so it should say 100 to begin with and then it's going to go um And then it's going to go down 25 steps. I hope this works. So I'll type in one. So it's printed out 100. And in five seconds, it should print out 75. And there it is. And then 50. Yeah. So imagine you're playing a game like Doom and you are standing on acid. Your energy is going to deplete. And then you are dead. So it's printed that, it's done the break, and now it's exiting uh, exiting the game. We might not want that. We might want to ask if the user wants to play again. So when you come out of here, um, you might want to, instead of exiting, um, instead of exiting the loop, you could, you could probably add this in. Um, do you want to play again? So input. So choice equals input. Oh, if you notice how I program, I write the construct out first like this. 
I do that and then I write do you want to continue now there's a reason why I do this because I can choose my variable now I might already have something I can use um, so I check my program before I do it but I know I don't so I'm going to call it choice and then choice equals in input do you want to continue and then if you remember yesterday I used this thing called dot lower because they might type in a capital letter um, but I'm going to put y n like this to guide them if choice is equal to um, if choice is equal to y um, I am going to set health equals 100 I'm going to set my health back to 100 so that the game starts again else they didn't press why they pressed anything else other than why I'm just going to break straight out and exit in game I think this will work so there you go do you want to begin one bang sets my health to 100 we've got to wait 20 seconds now but we'll do it because this is what I hate in lessons as well kids just doing this and then waiting these five seconds why don't you just set it to don't even have the sleeping while you're testing just get it to bash the numbers out without waiting but I'm just showing you like an advanced thing you can use to make again do you want to continue yes we do I set my health to 100 it will then set health to 100 again at the top um, but it will repeat forever now and we'll just waste our lives and wait for this 40 seconds of our lives just to slowly kill us inside and then we'll um, press N and show you that the whole program works and there you go exiting game so we're, we're, we're covering a lot of ground now we've, we've actually got enough I think right now to build this hangman game but because I've got 30, I'm on only on 32 minutes and I want to keep these lessons close to an hour so that if you watch them back at the same time it will take you an hour to listen and do, listen and do. So my demo example for you on this is to my demo using a while loop will be to um, choose your options like if you were in year nine now again and you were building a computer system for the school you need to check that the kid has definitely put three items um, appended three items into a list so there's going to be an empty list so create an empty list And then you have to um, tell a use tell a student to enter three options only when three options are entered into the list can the program exit. So that will be like imagine if we did it um, as a computer system. We got everybody in the school to sit at a computer, and you opened our little program here. And it says in the next in the next um, screen you will see all of your subjects um, uh, as as buttons on the screen. You had to click three buttons. So when you click the three options, you're going to do um, the program checks whether there's three actual options against your name. So I get them to enter their name and store. their options this is printed um, at the end so when you come out of the loop so there's two loops you need to run it you need you need to first of all put it into a while loop getting them to continually ask to enter their subjects so they're going to type in the subjects and when they've got three it's going to come out of that while loop and then print the um, options they chosen or they typed in and then exit the program that's what you're doing for your exam uh, advanced example so let's have a look at the time we are on 35 minutes
this one can be pretty quick I guess so um, we are going to create user input and then the advanced is going to come pretty sharpish with this so I have looked at everything in this program and now we're going to do something which you've already done a thousand times but I just want to show you a couple of other things we can do with it so this was our wow if you take your three dots out control and X and then control and V we can now just comment out everything we've done and start again we're talking about user input now you've seen and you've been do using this all the way since the very very start of these um, examples so what I want to show you is is data types in programming there are five data types we've got the integer now I think I did this with the year nines the other day so if the year nines are watching this they'll they'll have had a lesson on this and they'll know what's coming next integer is a whole number it's any whole number so one five eight hundred uh, that is a whole oh not with a letter in it it's not that's a whole number then we've got a float which is equal to um, uh, a number with a decimal point and then that is 5.7699 point that point not a comma and um, that and then point that as long as your number doesn't start with a zero it's a real number so it's any number with a floating point then you've got what we call a string and a string is anything in python which is uh, a list of letters because what we call um, strings in programming is an array of characters an array being like a list like I explained in yesterday's lesson it's just an array of characters you can even if I um, keep this into programming if I print and I go string and I go 6 and I run it it's printed out s because this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 it's printed out the sixth item in the list starting from 0 um, and that a string is basically just anything in Python between speech marks so I'll comment that out uh, the other one is a boolean now th these are really powerful these and it can be true or false now I was trying to do something with the year um, it's one or two values only two values I'm trying to do something with uh, as an example but I couldn't set the data type as a bool, so I'm going to have to have a look into that. I said I would, and I didn't. So we've got integer float, string boolean, and there's a, a data type which Python doesn't have, which is a character or the char, uh, and it's one letter. And then that could be that, 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 that. But you don't just put it in that. You've got to, when I'm using a character in Python, I use the singular quotation because Python doesn't actually have a specific data type for a singular character the reason you have these is when you're programming a real game you've got to look at be really careful about how much data things are taking up because when you've got millions of variables and especially if you're creating them dynamically your program could like in a game how many variables do you think there are there could be millions of them uh, or tens of thousands of them at least and each one takes up a little bit of memory and if you know you've only got so much memory to work with defining exactly how big the data should be in this part of memory is really important so you can do this you can use this now when you're doing your programs so if you know you're doing the last example for example th this um, the demo task from the last example so I'll probably end up showing you something you can do for your demo task now if you know you you need to take a string you can do this you need a name of somebody equals str and then um, input whoops sorry string input uh, see, 
I should do this the way I normally do it because I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. I write input because that's what I need to do. And then I want it to be in a, a definite string. And I just build it like that first. Then I put in my speech marks. And then I enter the question. Enter your name. So you can set the, a very specific data type. I, I can't enter anything else in now. If I don't enter an actual string in, so I'll show you what I mean by this. If I enter in 45, well, that can be seen as a number. If I press enter, um, it shouldn't work. So, but Python might, again, um, let me down and, and work. All right, it probably has converted it to a string. But I know if you do this one now, so we're going to do um, uh, money. So how much money do you have on you right now? I'm going to write float. I'm going to write uh, input. And then enter your money. So if you enter... Whoops. If I do this now, I'm going to enter your name. So I write show. And to your money, if I type this in now DF, it should break out like this. Because you're not allowed to convert a string to, oh, that's why it does that. Because you can convert a number to an actual string. You can, um, this is why typing in numbers um, is a bit weird. Because before we were doing this, my name, because I've got to use a different variable, equals input. This is almost the same as doing the thing below, enter. Um, second name so you could put surname here actually can you see we use we've been using this so far and it just converts whatever it gets to a, um, to a character I've got to find out what the conditions are for a string now in Python um, so flow enter money if you enter in um, so that's my name and if I enter in 67 what that'll do is it'll convert it to a 67.0 because in some programming languages if you specify it as an integer it'll cut off the actual decimal point so uh, enter your money 56.98 and that's done and then we've got um, your age which is an integer um, input enter your age and then we've got the bool at the end but I just I've no idea how to make this quit or say something different. So I'm just going to say is uh, amazing equals. And then I'm just going to have this as an input because the only answer you can have for this is going to be yes or no. Or true or false. Um, and that is getting user input. As long as you use this input keyword. That's how you get it. But what you know now is you can specify specifically what um, what the user's getting. So uh, advanced example for this would be uh, it's coming at forty four eighteen perfect. Forty-four thirty. It'll be by the time I've typed this and got back into planning. So our advanced example will be a game we've made in lessons before, which is um, we are going to. Um, I don't want to keep printing that out every time I do this, so I'm just going to comment that out right now. Um, we're going to get the computer to pick a random number. Um, remember, um, this is an advanced topic. I'm not explaining this new line I've just put in. Just I'll ex I'll tell you what it does, but I'm not going to explain it any more than I don't have to type the word random in anymore. So I'm going to go R and D equals run range ten. Um, I'm going to go um, while true. If you haven't done the other lessons, you won't know what that's doing. Um, A equals um, 
int input. I'm having to use an int because it needs to be a number, what I'm about to do. Enter, I guess. Um, if guess is, uh, sorry, if A is greater than R and D, I print too high. Else, LF, A is less than R and D, print too low. Otherwise, print, you got it. So let me explain the advanced tutorial what to do with uh, user input. If you don't specify this as being a number, then this program can't work because how is it going to know if letters are above or below uh, an actual number? So when we run it, it's going to say into a guess, five, the guess is too high, four, it's too high, three, you got it, you got it in three goes. Um, but what if, because it's only out of 10, we only give him two um, guesses. So guesses, guess equals two. Well, guess is greater than zero. So every time you enter a guess, we are going to go guess minus equals one. Um, come out of the loop. game over it took no we're not going to bother counting the guesses make it quick enter guess we've got five it's too low seven uh to a guess um, so I'll print you have a guess there you go so now we've got a little program going where you have two guesses left, enter a guess, we're going to go uh, five. You have one guess left, it's two I, so I'm going to pick three. And um, um, that was two I, game over. Um, we've obviously got only have two, two tries to get guess a number. Um, if we put the guesses to five, let's see if it works. You have five guesses left, enter a guess five, it's four guesses left. It's too low, so six. Uh, it's too low, seven. Uh, too low, eight. Yeah, we got it at eight. Wait, took us four guesses. Well, there you go. That's your advanced, um, your advanced uh, example of where you should always try to define your data type you want in, because um, it's it's really important that you, you don't get users entering in things they don't want. Right, your demo example for this, and this is going to be it for this video, because I do want you to try and follow it along at the same time. It's 10 minutes shorter than an hour, so the pausing and doing might fill in that time. But you really have to apply yourself when you're doing programming. There's no easy way around doing it. So your advanced uh, topic for using user input would be create a program with um ask the user for a name if they type uh, one non letter character within that name it will repeat forever until they do. 
Now there's some things you have to do some research on here. I'll give you a clue. You have to use a string manipulator like is alpha or is um I think that's what it's called actually in Python is alpha. You have to use that to check your string. You might have to use a for loop um unless is alpha is the for loop and it's just a little function within Python what does it for you. But you're going to use a while loop to jump in and it's going to keep checking forever if this string you have typed in is all alphanumeric characters and as a bonus if you can say you have and then pick out the non-alphanumeric character you have a thing it whatever a four in your name please remove it if you can do that that yeah you're on your way if you can bring a program like that I think I've left the comments open on this video because I want you to actually post in responses to some of these um, examples if you're watching this and you're not part of my classes uh, while we're in these um, homeschooling sections. I'd just like to see what you come up with because um, it's interesting to see how kids and students and people who've never done this before um, how they go around doing it because when I show you like it can be done in maybe one or two lines it develops that learning process and you become really good then and then we start writing some really clever and um, advanced programs. I remember a lad who I taught, I think it was about maybe five years ago now, is it five, one, two, it might, it might have been three years ago, four years ago, you'll probably know what I'm talking about if he, if he joined, um, if he's watching this video, um, because um, I made them all subscribe to this when I was in my last school. He showed me a really nice way of doing um, a rock, paper, scissors using uh, tuple lists. Now, I've not done tuple lists yet with you, but I couldn't. I thought it was really, really good what he did. It was a really, really clean way of doing it. And and I was using this weird um, list comprehension thing, which I thought it was too clever for its own good. And then this guy um, just showed me this nice, easy. It was brilliant, <laughs> I've got to say. So I've used it ever since. Uh, very clever. Um, and I, I, just, I just hope for things like that every time I'm teaching. Like just looking at you, know, you develop what you've got. You've taken like a small trivial example from what I've been showing you. And then you develop it into something really nice. Um, whether I've shown it you or not, you put, or I've seen it before or not, you've, you did it and you came up with that. And, I, and I, yeah, that's why, why I really enjoy the career. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to use or learn any of the other topics, I mean, year seven or not, just give them a, a watch. Um, if you don't, if you don't um, understand some of the topics we've done, please um, use this video to comment, I guess. But this is strictly from a year tens who need that little bit of uh, back and forth dialogue. But if you know who I am, I can communicate through your email and uh, Google Classroom. I'm not going to send um, a response through Show My Homework for this video. I will only send a homework request every Thursday morning with all the links to everything I've done. So the two videos I'll do um, will go in the, mon the Mondays actually because I do the third lesson on Monday for Year 10. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and just give some of this programming a go because when we start getting on to the putting graphics to the screen, um, it, it's all going to be pretty nice what we've got and we can start building some small apps, which you'll be dead proud of. So thanks a lot.